Christian Lopricht, uh, Professor of Political Science, Royal Military College of Canada and Queen's University. Over the next 40 years, there will be about 3 billion more people on the planet. Um, these will largely be born in the arc of countries from Morocco through to Afghanistan and in sub-Saharan Africa. That is to say, the same places in the world where we already see significant asymmetries between the demographic structure of these countries today and their political, economic, social, cultural, um, ethnic structures. And so as a result, there's going to be both uh, as a function of population growth and as a function of these asymmetries, uh, continuing pressure on some people to make a choice to migrate to find a better life for themselves. Keep in mind that these are also the regions that are the most affected um, by climate change, for instance. And so we need to think about what it is that we are prepared to do. Ultimately, if we think that a million people or two million people making their way to Europe uh, is a problem, with three billion people being born into conditions that are very challenging politically, economically, uh, there's going to be continued incentive uh, for people to migrate. And so we're simply not going to have the ability or the resources to build uh, bigger walls, bigger fences, and keep people out. And so we need to think about what does a sustainable strategy look like. And to some extent, that will have to um, encompass uh, an effective engagement with that region, trying to help to change and make political and economic and social cultural circumstances more sustainable uh, so that people um, have an incentive to stay in their home countries. And we know from surveys that by and large, even most migrants when asked will tell you that they would much prefer to stay in their home country, that they're choosing to migrate largely because the conditions under which they live are simply unbearable or dangerous due to conflict, or there's simply no hope because some economic and political crony elite uh, is trying to capture all the benefits, um, the benefits of the state. At the same time, we of course then need to, I think, double down on our rule of law regimes, that we need to make sure that the people who uh, request protection uh, under international law, under asylum regimes that we have in place, are generally those people who are the most vulnerable and not the people who are the most able, uh, either physically or economically, to make their way to the West. And so that will require also doing things like coordinating more closely on uh, asylum and refugee policy to develop more harmonized standards so that people don't exploit our refugee policies. Um, and it also means finding ways to make sure that people whose claims are rejected or who try to make claims outside of the rule of law regimes that we have established and that are then uh, these irregular claims that are ineffectively calling into question or jeopardy the ability to apply the regimes that we have in place consistently and effectively, um, that we also have an ability to, to remove people. And so I think we need to remove some of the emotions uh, around refugees. We, and we need to understand that on the one hand, demographics are going to pose continuing pressure uh, on migratory regimes and that on the other hand will need sustainable rule of law uh, regimes for both immigration as well as refugees and, uh, um, and asylum seekers. And to that effect, ultimately, given population aging, it's inherently in the interest of Western countries to, uh, take in, um, uh, to take in people. So we also need to counter and dispel some of the myths uh, around migration because ultimately our prosperity hinges on being able to rejuvenate uh, our population and uh, it also hinges on making sure that the migrants that Western countries take in uh, have the best possible prospects of succeeding socially, economically, politically, culturally uh, within our societies um, and making sure that they don't end up being marginalized and we have a whole lot of research on what are the right things to do and what are the wrong things to do. Unfortunately, what we know from research and the way politics acts in this field are not always congruous. And so as researchers, we can hopefully make a bit of a contribution to bridging that gap and hoping to contribute to a, to a more informed discussion both around migration and about the, the, uh, the, in, the effective integration 
uh, of migrants to our countries.